That's how you identify your purpose. It's exciting. Whenever you're doing it, it doesn't feel like work. Like, it's, it's amazing. Like, even when you're sleepy, your thought process is still working because you're thinking, so tomorrow I need to identify uh, what topic I need to talk about. What do I need to share? Who is it going to read? It's in your mind. You're at a function, but you're on your phone trying to Google to understand how best can I do this? But it's, and I, I felt it when I said, let me take this venture seriously. Let me not just look at it as a dump, a dump thought process. Let me actually take it seriously. Now, every minute I'm thinking, um, how can I be better? Uh, if I get a speaking engagement, how can I present myself? Uh, how many people am I reaching? How are my socials looking like? Because for you to thrive in this world, people go back and do due diligence on you in the world that I want to invest in. So you have to go back and see that whatever you did five years back, you're like a politician. You're like a politician. People will dig it up. And, <laughs> and they say, oh, she was this. She was that. To ruin your reputation, to ruin your process. And one thing I've understood or what my mentor has been telling me, that not everyone will be excited about your growth. And this is what every person out there must understand. That people around you are not always happy for you. And God was nice to not to show us people's hearts, you know. He was very, very smart, and he's a very smart God. I, I, I love that God. He, he, made it, he made sure that he was the only one who knew <laughs> what you're thinking, how you want to do it, even when you're seated with someone. You can't be there with someone, say so they're discussing Clayton, and they are thinking, what is he talking about? But they're smiling with you. Who, who does he think he is? But they're smiling with you. Now, once you understand that not everyone is happy about your journey and not everyone is on your journey, then you start focusing on you. You focus on you, you focus on your progress, you focus on how you do it. They will come on board five years from now and be like, hey, it was actually happening. It is happening for her. Despite the, the loopholes and the challenges and the gaps on the way, despite the naysayers who are saying, oh, no, she can't do it. Oh, no, 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 no. That podcast won't go anywhere. Wait for it. Just give it a year. They even give you a timeline. <laughs> they even give you a time and say, ah, give Clayton's podcast for a year and he will be out. The gas will be gone because that's what they're focusing on. That's what they hope happens. So what do you, how do you counter that? You must stay focused on the goal. Whether you have 10 views, whether you have 100 views, whether you have it's okay. It's, it's in the consistency. And I'm beginning to believe in myself in that level that if I have a hundred views, imagine they were in the room clapping for me. Those are many people. That's the angle I'm looking at it. I don't care if you have a million views and I have a hundred. It's okay. It's all in the journey. You started somewhere to get to your hundred million people, to get to your whichever level. It was a journey that you took from day one. And I don't think you started by 101 million people looking at you. No, it was a process. So allow me to enjoy my process. Allow me to start my process. And this process for me, you have to have the confidence to believe in yourself. Otherwise, you will get 100 clubs and five clubs will put you down. You will focus on the negative, but you forget that you had 100 people clapping for you. And the five are the ones who are taking your attention. And that it's, it's in humanity that we look for the negative. Who's saying the negative? Who's trying to bring me down? That's the one you focus on. Instead of focusing on the 100 people who are clapping for you and saying, go on, go, go on, you can do it. You forget those ones and you look at the other negative side. So for me, I am choosing on this journey to look on the positive. To look on the people who are saying, go on, you can do it. To look on the guys who are saying, we have a platform here. Come and use it. Come and be, come, come and share something. I am focusing on that. I'm not focusing on the ones who are saying, um, today your hairstyle is not looking good. So you start focusing on how you're looking like instead of the message. Instead of what you're trying to impact in the world. Because negative energy sells faster or moves faster. Our hormones and our body language will will be seen by when someone says, 
um, today you're not smart. You will focus on that and forget that you have a bigger purpose. And so on this journey, and just like any other journey, and if there are any young people who are watching us, we have to start focusing on the positives, things that build us. Because the negatives can be addressed in a minute. Saying you're not smart, you can dress up in a minute and you're smart. But investing in your knowledge, it's a process. It takes time. It takes energy. It takes investment. It takes taking some time away from your family, from your children, to be able to give them that. But someone comes out of the blend and says something small and negative, and then you're off the rail. So I am choosing not to listen to that. I am choosing to block all that noise and saying, yes, my channel is growing at a slow rate, but it's okay. Four years from now, you'll all come back for that content because you will need it. Simple, you will need it. And no one will force you to come for it. The circumstances around you will force you to look for it. Why? Because they say, if you don't change, change will change you without you wanting it to change. As simple as that, if the economy gets tougher, we have no time to waste anymore. We're going to look for content that is going to build us, that is going to turn us into productive people, that is going to help us stand out of the crowd. You will need to know that. No one will force you. You will just go on YouTube and say, how do I stand out of the crowd? And the content will come because you're looking for it. So at this stage, I have reached an age where I no longer care what people think about me, but I care about how much impact am I going to make in the world? How much work do I have to do to reach there? How much investment do I have to make to get to that level? And as young people, that is where we have to do, that's where we have to get if we're going to survive. Because the forces that are pulling you down are also quite many. So how you survive from that challenge is going to be very key which calls what you're talking about, understanding your strengths and your weaknesses. And to do that, you need emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence requires self-awareness and self-assessment. And once you go through those stages of understanding who you are, understanding your weaknesses and your strengths, then you know where to invest most time. You know what to do at what time. And then having the capacity to make decisions. Decision making is a whole topic altogether. <laughs> because the decisions you make right now will determine what happens to you in the next one hour. Will, will determine what happens to you in the next 20 years. So decision making is an art that most people take for granted. It's an art. And being able to understand that now I am at an age where I have to make decisions that are going to help me impact my children, impact my family, impact myself, impact my career growth. That is where we have reached. And possibly I would say 20 years back, uh, I mean, in my 20s, if I knew the things I know right now, I would be a billionaire. But it's also okay to go through that age, doing the things of that age, because if you don't do them, they will come for you at 40 years. You start behaving like a 20 year old at 40. So every stage has its purpose. And you have to be intentional in understanding what you have to do at each stage. But our generation right now, we are focused on things that want to get us money quickly, things that are going to bypass systems, you want to reach somewhere, you don't want to go through the process because you're fearing to fail. But it is, in, it is from failure that you pick lessons and then you'll fail again. And then you pick more lessons. You'll fail again, again and again. At the end of the day, there'll be that one success that will make up for all the failures. And then they say, you fail, you fail, and then that one big success will make up for each and every failure that you went through. Then um, again and again and again, after that again, you remove the A, and then you stay with gain. 
you again and again and again you say well, what's happening to me i'm trying over and over i'm trying over and over but once you remove that a and you stand with a gain that gain will be 10 times the again that you are going through so for me i i would just want to bring that impact into the young people to inspire the young generation and that's the journey i'm starting I want to give myself to the world to make an impact and in the process, I'm healing myself. So whatever I'm doing, literally I'm doing it for me. Because the more I impact the world, the more I heal myself, the more I become knowledgeable, the more I grow. Because for me to put out a message out there, I have to research, I have to read, I have to do several things. I am making myself better as I try to help someone else. And for me, that is where my light comes in. My eyes shine. Like, I, I, I know this is my purpose. I know I love to speak. But now loving to speak is not enough. I have to do more to make that speaking more impactful, more transformational. Okay, after you transform people, you go to stage four. How do you build a community that loves to transform? You start having those sessions. You start having those group meetings. And before you know it, you are a household name that is transformational, but also adding value to the community. So for me, my eyes light up when I start to speak. And that's how I got to know that that is my purpose. And that's how I got to identify that despite every little thing I'm doing in the job sector, that's an illusion. It will go away at some point. I'm building someone else's dream. It's time to build my own. And it's time for people out there to build their own dreams. But you can use the process of building someone's dream to pick lessons to build your own. That's why for me, I love being employed. I love being in the employment sector. Like I told someone that for me, I love people to employ me. I love working for people. Why? because I'm going to pick imaginable lessons. I'm going to pick so much that will help me drive my own dream. And when that time comes, then you can have a smooth transitions because you have learned so much. You have grown so much. You have worked with people. You know how people behave. You know expectations. You know, so that when you start your own empire, my friends, you have all the knowledge you need to run that empire to the epitome. And so for me, that's the angle I'm taking. And I believe that uh, with God's guidance, with God's help, and with commitment plus consistency, every young person out there who's going to watch this podcast must know that everything works with consistency and discipline. I think I'll get where I want to be. And I want, I'm going to note this down. That five years from now, I want to call Clayton and revisit this conversation and see where we are. And that's the journey I've started.